Hey, good evening, church family. It's uh, your pastor, Mike, again, and I uh, wanted to come to you uh, this evening from uh, the house here for a few moments. Uh, and when I say a few moments, uh, that's my goal tonight. But uh, I want to start this evening with uh, just a handful of announcements for you as a church, some things that I'm thinking and uh, some things that I'm planning on, and uh, I'm going to begin to need some help. And so uh, I hope uh, a lot of our folks are watching tonight. Um, anyway, let's start with this. Vacation Bible School. I mean, what a great program. What a great uh, way to teach children, uh, invest in the lives of families. Uh, we're still, uh, like you've heard me say, we're going to make this happen at Parkview. And I really am excited about all the folks who are participating in leadership. Um, just watching the beginnings of this has been fun. Uh, with those who are taking ownership of so many pieces of it. A uh, couple things about that. As we are going virtual this year, uh, with the current condition we're in, uh, culturally, it's probably best for us to do this. Uh, and so we are going to be doing a lot of our recording, okay? We're going to be like almost a, a TV set or something like that, where we're going to do a lot of recording this final week of June, okay? That is June 29th through Friday, July the 3rd. Okay, so that's not a whole lot of time between now and then for a lot of people to get ready. So I know the crunch is on and uh, a lot of things are going to be happening between now and then as far as planning, prep, building, uh, creating, uh, and, and so forth. So be in prayer for everybody who's a part of Vacation Bible School. Uh, I would highly encourage you to talk to Jamie if you would like to be a part. Talk to Christy uh, if you would, uh, get some diner, and uh, she can help you as well. And uh, if you talk to me, I'm going to probably end up referring you to one of them because uh, they know a whole lot more than I do. So uh, I do look forward to that. Then as you think about that, as we do a lot of the recording that week, the very next week, we're going to have to be putting things together. Uh, hopefully a lot will happen uh, in, in doing that that week uh, through July 3rd. But then Monday, July the 6th, we're going to be trying to put a lot of things together to, to take this literally into the homes of uh, our children, our families, and even others who have been a part of Vacation Bible School with us in the past. And so let me throw this date at you. Sunday, July the 12th, okay? That is the next Sunday. Um, we're going to work out all the plans. We're going to try to work out all the details, but we're going to ask all of our church family to help out, okay? Uh, that's, I think, going to be a great uh, project for us to do. That Sunday evening, as we uh, seek to begin to try to get back together on Sunday nights, uh, I know that's not a worship service or anything of that nature or even discipleship groups as we've talked about, but a great uh, time for us to uh, deliver and get out uh, all of the pieces of this virtual, the DVDs and things that will go along with that uh, on Sunday night the 12th. That way, hopefully, if they follow a five-day VBS in their home, uh, however they want to do that in, in each family, Monday through Friday, July 13th through the 17th, they can have that experience uh, in their homes uh, with their family. So that's something big that's coming up very soon and uh, look forward to uh, seeing how all that comes together. Excited about uh, the recording of all that together. It's going to be uh, a pretty big uh, production. Hey, secondly now, off of VBS, you've heard me talk to you about uh, the two main filters that I'm going to begin working through in the days ahead for our church, and that is prayer and discipleship. Um, look for more things. Uh, I'm going to share with you more things, maybe even a, in a, in a, um, a visual format uh, Wednesday night, whether it's a, a, like a tripod behind me with things written out for you to see or maybe something I can put on uh, a screen uh, for you. Look forward to sharing with you more ideas uh, along that way. But let me give you a couple of dates uh, that I really want to target. And as I give you these target dates uh, for some things in the future, please understand too that I, this week, am going to try to find a time where I can visit with the deacons as well as as much of the church council as possible. May even try to put those two meetings into one to save uh, myself one meeting and other people uh, one meeting. Uh, but as we look ahead, uh, I just mentioned Sunday night, uh, July the 12th. Uh, I believe that might be the best time to begin then our Sunday night time frames and getting back together, especially as we move towards a discipleship process of use, using Sunday nights and utilizing a Sunday night time uh, slot during the week for that. And so beginning July 12th, okay, I know that's a little ways away, but it gives us some time to prepare, some time to plan ahead on some of these things, especially for VBS. Begin to start uh, putting Sunday nights on your calendar uh, uh, on that particular day. 
I would like for us to meet uh, on the Wednesday prior to that. We're going to see how this works. Wednesday, July the 8th. Okay, Wednesday, July 8th. And we're going to meet with whomever wants to, whoever can, uh, whoever's feeling comfortable in the sanctuary for a time of prayer. Uh, that is a Wednesday night. I uh, would like to begin to, to, to see how uh, we can begin to move forward. As I've shared with you, my desire to have a dedicated prayer time for the church each week, uh, even if we have to find a, a different time so that it can stand alone, so that choir practice can stand alone in the future here. Uh, and so many things can be uninterrupted uh, with each other. But mark on your calendar Wednesday, July the 8th for um, for prayer and for a, a beginning on Wednesday nights. Now, I'm going to give you two other Wednesday night dates, okay? And this is going to be important as we think about um, this subject that we call business meetings, okay? We have not had a business meeting since February, uh, and uh, that's okay because of the situation we've been in. But here's two dates, and, the and I'll tell you why I'm giving you these two dates, is um, we're going to, as we begin to try to move back into getting... Um, uh, information back in us that's happening throughout the church and things that we're going to be moving toward. July the 22nd would be uh, our next uh, business meeting. It does not look like we're going to make June this, uh, this month, but July the 22nd, that fits the, the current bylaws of the, the Wednesday after the third Sunday, and then August the 19th, okay? Now, you say, Mike, why are you giving me two dates for business meeting? Well, Really what I'm after is looking at some potential changes in how we schedule, how we calendar some things uh, in the days ahead with things like prayer meetings, things like business meetings. I've shared some of that with you. Uh, we'll go into more detail later, but some of that would require two consecutive business meetings where some things, uh, some things may be discussed. Then some things have one month in between until the next business meeting to be voted on. And so just keep those uh, dates in mind, if you will, uh, as we look ahead. So, and if you want to know information, come talk to me, come call me, uh, text me, whatever the case may be. Love to have you do that. A lot of you have taken me up on that and would love to, uh, to fill in details later. But for now, those are some highlights and dates. And again, details to come later. Hey, a personal word uh, for you now from, from me, okay? Lori and I have signed a rental agreement with a UFALA address attached to it. And here is our hope. And here's the plan as the way things are working out for us personally, okay? We're scheduled to close yet again on our house with a different buyer this time on Monday, June the 22nd. And we are excited about that day, uh, hoping no glitches come. Uh, doesn't really seem like there's going to be. Uh, and so we look like we're locked in for June 22nd, which is two weeks from tomorrow. One week from tomorrow is when we have signed the beginning of our rental agreement there uh, in Eufaula. And since I commute every single day of the week almost, really, uh, to Eufaula. Every day starting next week, not tomorrow, I'm going to be bringing truck and possibly a trailer. Uh, so many of you have offered me my uh, your trailers. Uh, talk to Mac Morris even today, uh, and uh, many of you others have offered trailers. I only have one truck, so uh, I can only borrow one trailer at a time, but uh, who knows? Every day of the week, probably be bringing stuff down. Uh, I'll make some announcements because so many of you men have uh, wanted to help, and some of you have said, Mike, uh, you must call me. And so I will call you. I'll let you know daily what's going to be happening. And then maybe Saturday, June the 20th, maybe a big full-on move date with whatever's left. And so I share that with you, not to solicit all your help necessarily, even though I'm going to get you to do it because I can't do it myself. And so many of you have been kind. Uh, I do look forward to that. It's finally happening. Uh, and trust me, uh, I'm looking forward to only commuting back to Columbus to visit with family and not doing it every single day um, as I have to right now. Uh, this morning at, in worship service, I don't know if you were a part of that, um, either online or in person. Uh, as I shared with you uh, an amazing letter from Savannah Hutto in uh, New York City, okay, uh, the Fussell's granddaughter, um, just an amazing letter that this young woman shared about her heart for where the Lord has put her uh, and what he's done in her. I, I began to, to make other notes uh, on that, I, and I don't have real time to share with, uh, with you on that. But I do want us as a church, uh, as I think about even being involved in uh, mission work and helping and supporting and encouraging other missionaries, 
I think of Wes and Amy Black uh, um, over there in the Middle East, okay? Uh, really looking forward to seeing how we can uh, just partner more, prayer more, be more purposeful and uh, engaged uh, on an ongoing basis, as well as with Savannah uh, and others. Her, her letter this morning just lit me up, and uh, I want us as a church to continue to uh, do so much more uh, in that regard. Um, okay, now for the last few moments of tonight's uh, time together, just, uh, just some thoughts on my heart there. Uh, this past Wednesday night, I shared with you out of 1 Corinthians 13. Let me re-read these verses, okay? And as we started talking about a biblical response to the day in which we live, uh, the, the Apostle Paul starts off by saying, saying this, and now I will show you the most excellent way. I, I think about that phrase and, and Paul saying, this is the best way, the most excellent way to, to live, uh, to operate. And, and he's writing these words to a church. And so in the context of church life, he says, this is the most excellent way. And it begins in these first verses with these, what I call the if I verses. If I have some kind of special gift, but if I don't have love. Listen again to what he says. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, if I can just speak in this great way, but I have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Then he goes on to say, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries, and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, he says, I am nothing, okay? And then the last one, he says, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Paul says, if I have all these wonderful giftings in me, but if I don't have love, I'm just a noisemaker, I am nothing, and I gain nothing. And so love just seems to be the, the greatest key, the greatest commandment, uh, and, and the greatest word for the New Testament. Um, Jesus, when asked, what's the greatest commandment uh, of everything that there is out there? The, the Pharisees asked him this. He said, well, the, uh, he answered with two things, which put the two really together. When he says, the greatest commandment is this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He says, and the second is like it. And so he didn't stop there, even though he's only asked for one. He says, and the second is like it, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus gave us more interesting words when he shared with his disciples in John chapter 13 and verse 34, he actually said, a new command I give you. And so I'm sure their ears perked up and, and they leaned in to say, wow, something new here, this is gonna be good. And his new command said, I command you to love one another. He says, as I have loved you, you must love one another. And so the new commandment was love like I have, love like I am loving. Uh, and that's how you are to love. The Apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 3, when he's, he's talking about putting on the virtue of love, he's, or all these other virtues, he says, over all these other virtues, put on love, which binds everything up together in perfect unity. And so love just continues to, to reign throughout the entire uh, New Testament. And in fact, in John chapter 17, you'll remember these words. Let me just read them here. John chapter 17, beginning in verse 20. Jesus' prayer for us, even, because it's his prayer for all believers. He said, my prayer is not for them alone, but I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's us. He said that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me, so that the world will believe that you have sent me, is what Jesus said. I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Love is this evangelistic key. Love and unity is this incredible uh, exhibit to the world that, that Jesus was sent by, by God. And so how we love one another is a representation to a watching world that God is indeed who he said he is and it is a way to let them know that we are one and united, and it is very, very attractive. This is one of the things that made the church in the New Testament so attractive. 
I believe it's one of the things that makes Parkview attractive because of your love uh, for me, for one another. And it's something for us to maintain a focus on and maintain uh, a unity in. Now, let me just share a couple things uh, out of 1 Corinthians 13 before we shut this thing down uh, tonight. You know, uh, after those, if I have, but if I have not love verses, Paul goes on to tell us a little bit more about what love is. I love the fact that he, he starts off with this, uh, and that is love is patient. Okay, verse four, love is patient. Now, some of the translations, I believe the, the New King James says, suffers long, okay? Love suffers long. Now think about this, it's patient. Love suffers through, are you ready for this? Uh, I read this word uh, in, 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 uh, in light of this one. Love suffers through the junk that comes with relationships. Think about that. I don't know that there's a perfect relationship. I don't know that anybody has it. If you, if you have had the perfect relationship where there's no junk, there's not been any problem whatsoever, nothing to be patient with, nothing to suffer along with, I'd love to hear about it because you've got to be an anomaly. Otherwise, every relationship uh, has to make allowances and give patience uh, and suffer along with others. Now think about this. Another way of putting this, when, when we read that love is patient, it says it means that you make an allowance for someone else's fault, okay? If you are patient, if you suffer long, you make allowances for another person's faults. Now, let me put it to you in another way, and then we're going to move on pretty quickly. Are you ready for this? If you ever want to learn how to be patient like this and to suffer long uh, and love in this way, just realize this. The other person in your relationship makes allowances for your faults. That's true. And I say that because I realize that, that, uh, that I have a wife and I have a family and I have friends, okay, that make allowances for all of my faults, okay? And so I've been called to do the very same thing. Love is patient. Love suffers long. Love is also kind, is what the Apostle Paul says. Now, the word kindness in the Greek is uh, the word krestos, okay? Do you know what the word for Christ is in Greek? It's Christos. There's one letter difference. In other words, Christos, Christ, Christos is for kindness and acts of kindness. I love it the way one author put it. He said, as they are exhibited, means that you can be confused as being a little Christ, a Christian, okay? Uh, in other words, uh, acts of Christos, of kindness, makes you look like Christos, makes you look like Christ, and I think it's a wonderful word, uh, you know, uh, to, to talk about what love looks like uh, and how we're to be because we, we suffer long, we are patient, and we are people who give kindness. To summarize a couple of the others, it's just that love is not showy, okay? Love is not envious. It does not boast. It does not parade around. It is not proud. It is not puffed up. In other words, love is not a showy thing. Love is a very humble uh way to live as we are patient, as we are kind. It is not envious. It does not try to promote itself out front. It's not selfish either. And so, in other words, it's not rude. If you are rude, you're selfish. If you're rude, you're also disrespecting of other people, all right? Uh, it is self-seeking, all right? And that means it's selfish. The opposite of that would be to, uh, to gain understanding, now, I, I believe part of love, and this is something that I would talk about for a lot longer than I, I, I am tonight, part of love means that you seek understanding uh, instead of uh, self-seeking and, and seeking to just to be understood all the time and have everybody just say, okay, understand everything about Mike. No, I seek to understand you. That's loving. That's not selfish. Um, and so uh, it doesn't mean we have to agree uh, on everything, but I do if I want to love you, I have to seek to understand you and put myself back a little bit. Uh, it also means that it's not easily angered, not easily provoked. In other words, it's not uh, irritable, okay? Now, listen, again, just a quick highlight. It's easy to get irritable today at our culture. Uh, it's easy to get irritable at those who act and talk 
and do things that we don't understand. But again, if we try to seek understanding with another person, it may be that we can cross a cultural barrier that we did not know about. We can understand more of their background, uh, maybe the way they learn things or how they learned, uh, their current situation, uh, whatever uh, that may be. Uh, you know, it's like the old saying goes, you know, you know why lost people act lost? It's because they're lost, okay? They, they haven't discovered Jesus. They've not said yes or bowed their knee to, to Jesus as, as Savior of their life or Lord uh, overall in their world. And so, uh, again, it's not easily irritated. It's, seek, it's, a, it's a time where we seek uh, understanding. And the last thing I would say to you is this, is love just does not quit, okay? I love that about love. It does not quit. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. In other words, love is a commitment. It's a commitment to another person. It's a commitment to the body of Christ. And this is the only way that we can respond to our culture. And I believe as we respond to our culture in that way, the best way to, to do that is to respond to one another first so that the church is solidified on a foundation that does not waver on love, period, okay? Which will, I, I guarantee you, which will make us more attractive to a world that is watching. Because the world, they may not know how to act right now, but they want love. I think they want to be valued. I think they want to be respected. They want to be understood. And if they see a church that way to one another, then as we reach out in love to respond to them, they will make a connection and say, okay, well, they must be real because they love one another and they bear with one another already. They suffer long with each other because there's so many different kinds of people in the church. I mean, you're, you're just not going to have everybody in the church like you are. So you're going to have to do all these things. Uh, and it's the best way to demonstrate to a world that they mean the same to us because they mean the same to Jesus Christ. He died for them just like he died for us. His love for them was the same and is the same as it has always been for us. And so love is just the key to everything. It's the great commandment. It's the new commandment, as Jesus said. The apostle Paul says that it's what we're supposed to put on. It binds everything else together up in unity. It is evangelistic in nature, as Jesus prayed for us in John chapter 17. We just can't escape the fact that really, if you wanna break it all down and say, how do we respond to our culture today and our world? It's with love which means a lot of things. And we can go back over this uh, at another time in another way. But anyway, for, not, for, for tonight, uh, that's gonna be enough. I wanna pray for you, pray with you. And then uh, concerning any of these other announcements that I gave you up front, I'm happy to talk with you about it uh, at, at your convenience, at my convenience, when we can get together and look forward to uh, talking about the, all these things uh, really soon. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for a great morning for uh, giving us opportunities, Lord, to continue to come back together as the body of Christ. Uh, and Lord, it's, it, there's just something to write, uh, write about being encouraged with one another in person. Lord, for the part of our church family that's still at home, even on Sunday mornings, uh, Lord, we know that everybody continues to navigate through difficult times, difficult feelings, and trying to discern and understand what all we're supposed to do. Lord, would you bless each one and Father, I know that, that they'll, they'll be back with us soon at some point. But for now, Lord, I honor them. I love them. And Lord, I know that they are honored by you because they are, they are seeking your heart, your mind, and your face on this matter as well. So Lord, bless everyone tonight at home or those who are getting out still at this time. Lord, above all, keep us safe. Keep us healthy, we ask. And Lord, help us to be uh, the responders to our community that uh, we're supposed to and that is people of love, those who love one another in every way within the church, and we exhibit love to those outside the church that we're trying to reach and impact uh, for the kingdom of God. And Lord, we love you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all tonight. Hope you have a wonderful evening, and look forward to seeing you and talking to many of you uh, this week.